All right, so uh, I have to leave this screen and take roll. So when you hear your name, please sound off. Jeremiah Albert. Here. Jaron Barnes. Richard. Yeah. All right. Brian Brumfield. I'm here. Deja Davis. Deja Davis. Kyle. Here. Sierra Gaines. Sierra. Tia Green. Here. Jordan Hampton. Here. Jay Brion. Hilaire. Here. Covey. Joseph. Here. Renee Lyons. I'm here. Nice, Nicenia Mafi. Nicenia Mafi. Mr. Oreki. I'm here. Jasmine Patterson. Here. Ashley Sko. Here. Timothy Shorts. Here. Alana Taylor. Elena, I'm here. Elena, okay, sorry about that. Spencer Tillman. Here. Broderay Turner. Broderay Turner. Chloe Veal. Chloe Veal. Devontae Williams. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Miss Williams, I don't think she's missed one class yet. Ever Winston. Wait, Dr. Barnes, did you hear me say here for Chloe? Oh, yeah, Bill? I got you. I got you, definitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, is Ever Winston here? Darlinda Wright. Here. Nataja Young. I'm here. Okay. All right, great, great, great. I'm so, here, too. Okay, David who was that? David Davis. That's who? David Davis. Okay, let me uh, make sure I got you here. Mark this present. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'm going to do a once over of the people who didn't respond. Jaron Barnes, last Brujas. Jaron here. Uh, Sierra Gaines. Here. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Nicenia Mafi. Nicenia Mafi. Brodre Turner. Here. Okay. Chloe. Here. Okay, great. Ever Winston. Okay. All right, folks. So uh, we're going to review. Uh, let me see. Let me go to the uh, assignment window, and then I'll put my share screen up. Somebody needs to uh, turn their mic off. Okay, chapter three. All right, so uh, I'm going to put my share screen up. Uh, a couple of people sent me an email over the weekend about the assignment. And uh, I did update the assignment on Friday. So I'm just going to share that with everybody. And we're going to do a light review uh, because we do have a midterm exam this, uh, this Saturday. And that midterm exam is from 3 p. The, the window to take it will be uh, between 3 p.m. on this Saturday. And I'll give you that exact date to uh, 3 p.m. the following day, which is Sunday. So you have a 24 hour window of time to take the test. You will be allotted 45 minutes to take the test, which is more than enough time. Okay, so let me put the uh, share screen up. And so we saw a great video on abstract representational and non-representational art. You know, the video with the lady with the annoying voice. So this is the updated homework. I wanna make sure everybody sees that. Okay, so this is uh, the homework assignment, abstract representational 
and non-representational art. So what I want everybody to pay attention to, the way you're going to review for the midterm is to basically review your homework assignment questions because all of the test questions come directly from the homework. So the first question is explain the word representational and how it pertains to art. The second question, explain the word non-representational and how it pertains to art. Then explain the word abstraction and how it pertains to art. Then it lists some of the artists featured in the video. Describe artist Kahende Wiley's artwork. Which category does it fit in? Describe artist Pablo Picasso's more famous artworks. Which categories does that fit in? Describe artists Wassily Kandinsky's artwork, which category does that fit in? Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. And uh, that is what uh, you'll be expected to respond to. So let's go backwards and look at some of the prior assignments. And uh, we'll start our review that way. Whoops, wrong button. Uh, that's the role. Here we go. Wait, Dr. Barnes, is that is that our homework assignment or is that a review for the test? Well, all of your homework assignments are test content, but that's the homework assignment that's actually due on the uh, on the day before the test. This is due okay. on uh, October the 8th. But uh, if you go ahead and knock it out, it'll fit in nicely with your review. So we're going to go back to the first assignment and start the review process. So we're going to do this again on Wednesday. OK. So uh, everybody should be able to do okay. really well on the test. OK, so what is art? And uh, this was the homework assignment for what is art. And so uh, your answers are what's going to be on the test. So define the following terms. Subject matter, right? That is the uh, subject, that is the content of the uh, work that you're looking at. That's the uh, ideas behind it. Style, geometric, cosmopolitan, renaissance, ceramic, calligraphy, patch, patron, medium, graphic design, and logo. So let's take a look at the uh, terms and uh, go over the uh, answers. Let me see. Uh, back. Okay, so subject matter. You know, remember those blue terms in the index in the uh, margins of the uh, of the of the book. Subject, subject matter, the person, object, or space depicted in a work of art. You're going to see all of these uh, terms will be in a word bank. And you'll, the answer will be an incomplete sentence, and you will have to complete the sentence with the correct term from the word bank. Style, a characteristic way in which an artist or group of artists uses visual language to give a work an identifiable form of visual expression. So uh, I like to show you all some of my artwork from my web page, and you can get a sense of my style. All right, this is my web page. Welcome to John Barnes Art. So my style is very distinct. Once you see it, anytime you see it repeated, you'll know it's my work, you know? So uh, this is some of my work. Uh, it's, it's wood constructed work. So, you know, images that have, uh, you know, urban effects, you know, kind of dilapidated building type effects, graffiti, that's like really my style. So I don't know anybody that works this way. So this could be my style. In this case, the subject matter is kind of dark. Uh, this series is called eschatology, which is any system of doctrines concerning last or final matters, such as death, the judgment, the future state, et cetera. So anyway, this is a body of work I did about 12 years ago. And uh, it, got, it got reviewed internationally, and a lot of it got collected. But anyway, just so you get a sense of what someone's style can be. So this is one body of work. Uh, I have uh, four galleries uploaded, but I have a total of six. So I have two more bodies of work to upload. 
to my website. This is some older work. Uh, this was featured in an international biennial. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that it, 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 these works also have that, uh, that type of, uh, you know, wood constructed style. You see screws and little plates of wood. Uh, this body of work was painted. All of my work isn't painted, but it, it all shares that same uh, sort of uh, stylization and surface quality. Mm -hmm. And let me go back up. You see another uh, series of works. This is my eye candy series. This deals with the, uh, these are shadow boxes. You know, these are like uh, wall reliefs that uh, have uh, indentations uh, and protrusions that create shadows. And uh, this series of shadow boxes are inspired by the Eye of Horus from Egyptian antiquity. These boxes are stylized depictions of the human eye. Once again, there's that word style the energy that is created by the recessed spaces and deep cavities represents shadow work or self-improvement. The viewer is blessed to be in the gaze of the eye, which is designed to promote well-being, healing, and perfection. And protection, I'm sorry. So these, as weird as they look, these are all uh, based on that principle. These are all eyes, you know. You may or may not be able to see them. But uh, these, these actually did quite well. Uh, I've been showing these for for about a year or so, and you know, people who get it really like it. All right. So anyway, that's an example of a of a artist style, different sort of style. All right. So uh, let's get back to the terms. Okay. Let me see. Not on this one. Okay, geometric, predictable. You see, my style is very similar to this artist, Louise Nevelson. You see, she works with these little boxes, shadow boxes and shapes, very similar style. Okay, but anyway, geometric, predictable and mathematical composition, the overall design or organization of an artwork, Renaissance, a period of cultural and artistic change in Europe from the 14th to 17th century. So the way this would appear on the, on, the, on the midterm would be blank describes a period of cultural and artistic change in Europe from the 14th to 17th century. Ceramic, fire hardened clay, often painted and normally sealed with a shiny protective coating. Calligraphy, the art of emotive or carefully descriptive hand lettering or handwriting. Okay. All right, let's go back. Patron, okay, patron. An organization or individual who sponsors the creation of works of art or basically somebody who pays money. That's what's, that's, that's the nice way of saying sponsor. <laughs> that's a nice way of saying somebody spends money, they're a sponsor. Medium or the plural media, the material on or from which an artist chooses to make a work of art. Graphic design, the use of images, typography and technology to communicate ideas for a client or for a particular audience. Logo, a graphic image used to identify an idea or an entity. Let me uh, close this window. Okay, all right, so that was uh, the questions that from the test that will come from the what is art homework segment. And now we'll move on to the assignment after it. So before we do, does anybody have any questions or you kind of get this, you kind of see where we're going with this? Um, I have a question. 
Yes. So it's actually about the quiz one. I know that you said you would keep it open until today because you wanted to do like a review for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to uh, open it up today, you know, after we do the review. So I just pretty much have reviewed half of quiz one. Now we're going to okay. review the other half. So open quiz it up. one will be like a preview to the midterm. Pretty much. OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. I I messaged you the other day because you said like Friday was a day to turn out the late assignment. But Saturday no was. Message. You said Saturday. I ain't get no message back. I I because they were closed. I I messaged you on camp. Yeah, I saw the message. Uh, you said that uh you didn't see the updated assignment for the chapter three work, and uh I told you that it was done. What you? Now I said another assignment was, was open. Mm -hmm. I was trying to go do. Cause remember I said I had no internet the whole. Uh, Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So yeah. you need more time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I need more time. Okay. So do you have internet now? Yeah, I have internet now, but like all the assignments closed. I can't go back and, and do it. All right. I'll, I'll open it up for you uh, and leave it open till Wednesday. How about that? Right. Okay. Sure. No problem. Any okay. other questions? All right, we will continue. Okay, where is art? All right, this is the homework. So the homework assignment is critical to studying. Define the following terms. Oil painting, context, tempera, medieval, manuscripts, and the artist Simon Rodia. So let's take a look at the content. Okay. This is the first. So uh, on this particular exam, we're not going to really be responsible. I'm not going to make you responsible for knowing the, uh, being, you know, recognizing and knowing the titles of artwork. But for the test afterwards, we're really going to be looking mostly at artwork and we're going to be, uh, you know, having to commit to memory the names of the artists. Okay, so let me uh, go to the next page of terms. Okay, all right, so oil painting. I don't have my glasses on today, so I gotta zoom in. Old man eyes, you know, oil painting paint made of pigment suspended in oil. Nobody should get that answer wrong because in the definition itself, you have the word paint and oil. So you should be able to just at the bare minimum do a word association. But you'd be surprised people will get that question wrong even though uh, the answer is within the question. Context, circumstances surrounding the creation of an artwork including historical events, social conditions, biographical facts about the artist and his or her intentions. So Ms. Veal, if you had to make a uh, work of art uh, based on the uh, historical events happening today, what would be what you would consider to be a historical event happening today? Um, COVID, the pandemic. Okay, absolutely. So what are some of the symbols of the pandemic that, that we would immediately see as a visual cue that would, yeah. The mask. Um, the mask. Absolutely, the mask. Uh, what, what else are some of the visual cues of COVID, this COVID era? A People socially distant, six feet apart. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Okay. And, um, and uh, people who who choose to get the vaccine based on the research. There you go. Who choose not to get the vaccine based on the research. Right. That division, that schism, that's all part of the age of COVID. Okay. What are some, so we would say the historical events and social conditions are kind of merged there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So context, that's what we mean when we refer to context. Okay, let's see the next uh, page of, of, of content. Okay, Simon Rodia, 
and the Watts Tower Monument. This is a very important uh, cultural piece of work. And uh, we, Simon Rodia, so this is the historical information on Simon Rodia. I would make myself familiar with this whole paragraph because the question about Simon Rodia could come anywhere from there. Because on the homework, you had to sort of discuss who he was. So you could have picked and cherry picked through it. But uh, you need to be familiar with the whole story, uh, you know, this whole paragraph. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, Simon Rodia's work demonstrates that art can be found in one's own neighborhood and that many, perhaps most people, possess the creative impulse to make art and express it in numerous and often surprising ways. Rodeo devoted many years of his life to creating a single artwork. He had never been trained to be an artist, but he shared with professional artists a creative impulse that dominated his life. So you have to review this whole paragraph because the question or questions about Simon Rodia are going to come directly from there. Okay. All right, so we go to our blue margin. Okay, tempera, fast drying painting medium made from pigment mixed with water soluble binder, such as egg yolk. You wanna associate this term with egg yolk and pigment and you won't go wrong. Tempera, fast drying. How many, the, the kids, uh, when, when I was coming up, all kids played with tempera paint. Is that something that uh, your generation did or was it all like digital? Anybody can answer that. No, I used it. Okay, great, great. Tempera paint is a really cheap material and it dries really fast. So that's one of the main reasons it's offered in schools because it dries. Okay, in situ, in situ, in the location for which it was originally made. One could say the Watts Tower is an in situ uh, monument that was originally made to be presented in Watts. Medieval, relating to the Middle Ages, roughly between the fall of the Roman Empire and the start of the Renaissance. Yeah, the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages are kind of combined. Uh, Europe went into a very dark period after the fall of the Roman Empire and people kind of went savage. So uh, we want to be aware of that. Uh, a lot of our your, your Roman Catholic cathedrals were built during the medieval period using a, a, a abundance of indentured servants and slaves. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we have the Mona Lisa. All right. Okay, this is more an example of Renaissance artwork. Uh, you want to always be mindful of the dates of the Renaissance. So if it's between the 14th and 17th century, it's the Renaissance. So this is 1503 to 1506. Oil on wood. Uh, a lot of people were not aware that the Mona Lisa was painted on wood. One of the benefits of painting on wood is you don't have the flex of the canvas so you're painting directly on a flat, solid surface, so you're able to get your intentions across better. But, uh, you know, a, a work of art is considered to be a masterpiece for a broad range of reasons. Uh, when we look at the background, uh, we see early state, we see an early scene in Europe before there was a lot of uh, technology and advancement. So we are definitely uh, looking at this through the lens of a context. We have to assume that the hairstylization, uh, the adornment, the clothing that she's wearing would be considered the uh, trendy garb of her day and that uh, this would be the idealized background of a uh, natural type of landscapes 
with slight human interventions in the form of paths and bridges. All right. So we'll move. So these two uh, homework assignments comprises the content of quiz number one. OK, that's the content for quiz number one. So uh, it's going to be a little it's going to be a little challenging because uh, sorry about that. Because we do, I'm going to uh, set up quiz number one to happen uh, at 3 p.m. Thursday to 3 p.m. Friday. And then a day and a half later, you'll have your midterm exam. And then we'll be completely caught up. So let's go to the next assignment. Wait, what's Thursday? Thursday is quiz. I pushed the dates back for quiz one. Everybody hasn't taken quiz one. So uh, because we've had the, the gaps and in, in some people have taken it and some people haven't. So I'm going to uh, make I'm going to reset the portal for Thursday. If you haven't taken quiz one, you can take it this Thursday at 3 p.m. to Friday at 3 p.m. And then on Saturday at 3 p.m., the midterm exam is going to be offered. Now, here's the deal. Since we don't have any crisis going on, if you mess around and miss the midterm exam, that's going to be the grade you're stuck with. So let's make sure we handle that. And if you, you know, anticipate problems with the Internet or whatnot, you have to communicate to that, that to me in advance so we can make an accommodation. But we've got to get that midterm grade that midterm test uh, this weekend. It's a midterm this Saturday? Yes. At what time? You have between 3 p.m. on Saturday to 3 p.m. on Sunday, then the portal closes unless you have an official excuse from the Office of Academic Affairs, you will not be allowed to retake the midterm. All these retakes and, and, uh, and, and pushing back due dates is based on the storm. Okay. Okay, Dr. Barnes, is the quiz so the quiz is based on what we just went over or Yeah, it's on the first two uh the first two homeworks. Okay. Mm. And the mid in the midterm is based on what? All of the homeworks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So basically just go back to what we turned in for homework and just Yeah, yeah, I'm reviewing that. it with you right now. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Let's continue. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing, folks. I'm, I'm reviewing for the midterm with you all. So please, you know, tune in. Try to be aware of what's going on. I'm explaining to you where the questions will be coming from. Okay. Let's continue. All right. Any other questions before I before I continue? All right. Let's keep going. Who makes art? Okay, this is the homework assignment. So this is the biggest one and this this is going to be so there's going to be a lot of terms that you're going to be responsible for, okay? Uh elements of art principles of art, line, shape, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, contrast, engraving, outline, plane, texture, space, volume, background, actual line, implied line. Okay, let's go to the assignment. Uh, let's look at the content where you will find the answers. Okay. All right. I don't have my glasses, y'all. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. While you people are young, if you have good vision, you really should do the most you can with it. Because uh, once you hit 40, everything goes downhill. Okay, elements of art. The basic vocabulary of art. 
Okay, so before we do that, you got to understand the elements and principles are different. The elements of art is the basic vocabulary of art, and that's about descriptive terms. Line, shape, form, volume, mass, texture, value, which is the lightness or darkness of a work of art, space, color, and motion in time. Motion in time refers to film. Okay, those are the elements, basic descriptives. Now you have the principles or the grammar of art, how you discuss the contrast, the unity, the variety, the balance, the scale, the proportions, focal point, emphasis, pattern, and rhythm. Describe the ways the elements of art are arranged in an artwork. Now we get to all these terms. Line, a mark or implied mark between two endpoints. Shape, a two-dimensional area. So two dimensions refers to a flat surface, like the page of a book or a photograph, okay? So it only has height and width. So shape, a two-dimensional area, the boundaries of which are defined by lines or suggested by changes in color or value. Okay, I just described two-dimensional. Three-dimensional, which is sculpture, having height, width, and depth. So your cell phone is three-dimensional. You as a, as a human being are three-dimensional. Uh, if you have headphones, anything that you can view from all sides is three-dimensional. Contrast, a drastic difference between such elements as color or value, which is the lightness or darkness, when they are presented together. So uh, this page, for example, is white with black writing on it. The black writing and the white contrast with each other. So if, if the background were black and the type and, and, and the text was black, there'd be no contrast, therefore you wouldn't see it. Engraving, a printmaking technique where the artist gouges or scratches the image into the surface of the printing plate. Outline, the outermost line or implied line of an object or figure by which it is defined or bounded, outline. So if you've ever traced something, if you take a penny and you put it under a sheet of paper and you uh, trace the outer edges, you're outlining it. Plane, not an airplane, a flat two-dimensional surface on which an artist can create a drawing or a painting. So that can be a sheet of paper is your plane, uh, in the case of the Mona Lisa, where the painting was made on, on wood, the plane or surface material was wood, okay? Uh, if you're going to use canvas, the plane is canvas. Planes can also be implied in a composition by areas that face toward, parallel to, or away from a light source. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is an example of line. Yeah, it's a little wider. Okay, these are the uh, Nazca lines uh, in uh, Peru. And this is an aerial view from a, a, a helicopter that's about a thousand feet in the air. And this is a giant earthwork where this giant, uh, what appears to be a spider, is constructed out of mounds of dirt uh, and, and rock that are gathered. And this was done, this is an ancient work, so it's permanent, it's thousands of years old, but uh, this is definition of an outline. You know, this is an outline of this figure. But you see how the lines just crisscross. If you're at the ground level, 
it doesn't look anything like this. It just looks like an open plane with uh, these large roping columns, but it, you, you really can't tell that it, it is it is this particular thing. This is a uh, 500, uh, this is 100 and 150 feet wide. So to put that into context, that's like uh, it's the width of a 15 story office building. Okay. All right, more examples of line work. This is a, a drawing. Uh, this is a technical drawing of the design of, of this particular space underneath. So you see how the lines vanish. They start here and they, they, they descend. Everything's uh, sort of moves in a V pattern. Uh, this is called a vanishing point. So the vanishing point would probably be around right here. There'd be an, this is an implied line from this point to this point, this point to this point, this point to this point, but it creates the illusion of depth in a two dimensional drawing. And so let's go to our terms, texture, the surface quality of a work, for example, fine texture, coarse texture, detailed or lacking in detail. If we rub our hands on our head, we feel a certain texture, right? That's that feeling. If you have a, a rug, it has a certain texture quality to it. If you touch a, a piece of, if you touch a, a, a plastic uh, cup, it has a certain texture or feel to it. Okay, space, the distance between identifiable points or planes. So the distance between this point and this point is space. We don't mean outer space with space aliens, stars, and moons, but we mean the distance between points. This is space between my hands. Volume, the space filled or enclosed by a three-dimensional figure or an object. That is the volume. Okay. And we probably got time to do one more page from this chapter. Uh, I think I might have missed a page when I loaded this because uh, I did receive some complaints. But uh, you won't be responsible for the part that's missing. Okay. Uh, this, uh, all right. So we have some examples of lines. These are actual lines on this column and implied lines on the other column to the right. So the actual lines are, you know, this is their actual lines. They have varying textures. And then we have implied lines. So a grouping of dots between two endpoints becomes an implied line. And these are closer connected dots, almost like a line of ants. And then we have a bar graph uh, that creates a line. Then you see how these numbers are assembled and grouped. They too create a line as these antenna, Yagi, Yagi antenna forms create a line. All right. Okay, so that's our review for today. We will have another review on Wednesday and we'll have another review on Friday. And, you know, on Friday, I'm going to be reviewing directly from the test. So we want to make sure we're, we're in attendance for that. Uh, I understand a lot of people don't have an art background, don't want you to be intimidated. Uh, but, you know, it's a science to it. It's, you know, it's not just, oh, that's pretty. There's a science to it. So what we're going to do after the test, we're going to spend a few days going over a visual analysis chart. This chart will have all the keywords and expressions you will need, and then you will all be assigned a work of art to review based on that chart. Uh, so are there any questions? Um, Dr. Barnes? Yes. This is Chloe. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do who makes art. I didn't do that assignment due to not having, like, uh, internet. Okay. I was saying 
is there way it should, I can... still, it should still be open did you try to turn it in because i re i cleared all the zeros if you didn't turn in an assignment and got a zero i cleared it once the zero is cleared you're free to s submit the uh assignment all i see now because i'm at the du library all i see now is my chapter two assignment and then the chapter oh, three oh, That's oh, I, have to, I have to reopen it i have to reopen it so uh okay. Yeah, by the end of the day, it'll be reopened and, and you'll be able, because there's a date, the end date. So I have to switch the end date to Wednesday, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any any other questions? Ask away. Yes, sir. Did you get my attendance? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, folks, I really enjoyed our session today, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care. Have a good day. Have a good day. All right, you have a good day. You too. Um, Dr. Barr. Yes. For um, the third artist in the homework, um, Kandinsky? I'm oh, Kandinsky. Yeah, yeah. Kandinsky. Do Are you we... remember the video, the guy who had the amoeba-looking like artwork? Mm -hmm. We only That's going off that artwork. You don't want us to look up nothing else. Just that, uh, that, that. well, uh, in terms of the homework, uh, that's what's most relative. But you could, you know, since we're dealing with style, uh, you know, of abstract, representational, and non-representational, you should be able to identify that with any group of art that I show you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, star is the only one we're looking at, right, for him. Right. Well, we're looking at, well, like I said, it could be any, it could be those artists or it could be the artists that are listed in your, you know, course resources, you know, the, uh, the Hinde Wiley, I mean, uh, the other artists listed on the assignment, you know, cause that is, okay. a, yeah. So any, any one of them could be used. For the homework? No, nah, for the test. Oh, about, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. So yeah, cause the test, if you understand what representational is, I can show you any work that's representational and you'll understand that that's representation. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. Thank you. Have a blessed day. You too. Wait, so Dr. Barnes, mm -hmm. for the uh, test, wait, what, did she, what was she saying like about the- Well, she was asking about uh, the homework assignment based on uh, the last one for chapter three, the one that's due Friday on a non-representational abstract and representational artwork and basically yeah. when you know after you review the assignment you should be able to identify uh those works that are representational non-representational and abstract very easily oh okay after you I, do so the I, assignment I, yeah so when you do the assignment it's going to fill you in on it the the criteria is very simple but once you know the criteria you should be able to categorize any work of art that, that you're presented with as either okay. not as non-representational, representational, or abstract. And that will be on the midterm? Yes, ma'am. Abstract and non-representational. We have to identify it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And our homework in our homework chapter three assignment, we have to identify it as well, too. Uh, well, the assignment just explains. Oh, we to have that. to define. Right. We just, yeah, you just have to. It explains the differences and shows examples. And the video really codifies it. So after uh, the reading and the video, you should have no problem uh, identifying those different types of artwork. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All righty. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bonas. Have a great day. All right. You too. Mm-hmm.